Hey everyone, I just finished overviewing my favorite elite unit, which is the Elite Huskarl from the Goths. But I think that in order to properly overview this unit, I need to overview the entire civilization as a whole. And I think that that's what this video is going to be about. It is a very fun civilization, known for its infantry spam. But I think that the Goths have more options than just this, and they have multiple ways to actually use their infantry, which is what I think makes the Goths so fun. Now I understand that other people have already done their overviews of the Goths. Some that are good, some that are good. And anyways, I think that I don't want to do that really. I'm not going to do the same type of video. Instead, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the tech tree of the Goths and the civilization bonuses. But then I'm going to show you how I normally use the Goths in a deathmatch game. If you don't play Deathmatch, you, can st you should still watch this video, because this really goes for any post-imperial situation. So, as we can tell, just about all of the important bonuses have to deal with infantry. The ones that aren't important are really, villagers have plus 5 attack versus wild boar, and hunters carry plus 15 meat. I mean, I guess you can use this in the feudal age or something like that, but I really don't care too much about that. Plus 10 population in Imperial Age is an interesting one, and I think that this was originally created in the days of Age of Kings to allow a Goths player to be able to spam more because the max population limit at the time was only 75. Nowadays, I don't think it really does nearly as much. However, if you're at max population, it allows you just to have maybe 10 more important villagers or trade carts or siege units or just something that you would normally wouldn't be able to field. And now for the good stuff. First, infantry cost minus 35%. What this means is that a goth champion won't cost 60 food and 20 gold anymore, but instead 39 food and 13 gold. That is a huge difference, and this will allow the goths just to be able to spam almost 35% more units than their opponents. Infantry having plus one attack versus buildings is nice because it allows the Goths to use their infantry a little bit better as raiding units. It's really not that much of a deal, but Huskarls already have a attack bonus versus buildings, so it kind of helps you out in the background there. Their team bonus and perfusion allow the Goths to basically spam Huskarls, Champions, or Halberdiers from their barracks really fast, and what this does is just allows you to spam really cheap units really fast, which is basically what most players use the Goths for. I'm going to talk about Anarchy a little later. So the next thing to notice about the Goth tech tree are their archers. They are missing the Arbalast, Thumbring, and Parthian tactics, and have a lack of archer bonuses, which will keep their archers from being the best archers in the game. However, they have all their archer blacksmith upgrades, and they have the hand cannon here. I personally think that the hand cannon here is a really huge asset to any player if the enemy is going to use any infantry at all, and as such, the goth archery range is below average, but you're still going to want to make it from time to time. Now when looking at the goth barracks, the only downside is that they lack the last armor upgrade. What this means is that every now and then, they will die one attack sooner than a normal unit. However, this is completely and totally offset by the extra infantry attack versus buildings, the lower infantry cost, the fact that the barracks creates units 120% faster, and because of Anarchy. Anarchy is probably one of my favorite techs in the game, because it allows you to create the incredibly powerful and useful Huskarl at the barracks. And this is part of what makes the Huskarl so useful. Because instead of having to drop down a couple of castles to spam them, you can just use the eight barracks that you should have playing as a goth player to create an army of raiding Huskarls extremely fast. 
Now, I have already done a video on the Elite Huskarl, but to quickly recap, the Huskarl is a high pierce armor unit, and it's a really fast infantry unit, which makes it probably one of the best units for raiding opponents' economies. It is created incredibly fast, which means that even though it is countered pretty well by some units, you can create it so fast that you'll just overwhelm your opponents with numbers if you have the economy to support this. Because of these incredibly powerful bonuses, the Goths have the best infantry in the game. Some people may disagree with this, but this is my ranking. So, there's not anything too special about the Goth stable. I mean, the Paladin and the last armor upgrade are missing, as well as any camel line. However, the Goth have access to the Hussars and Bloodlines as well as Husbandry. So you're definitely going to want to make some pretty good Hussars to take down enemy siege, but going a heavy cavalry route really isn't going to be that feasible as the Goths. As such, they have a below average, but yet still usable, stable. So my overview of this next part of the tech tree is probably going to be kind of controversial, and some people will probably disagree with this, but this the siege workshop is actually one of the better parts of the Goth tech tree in my opinion. Now you'll notice that there's no Siege Engineers, no Siege Onager, and no Siege Ram. So why would a Siege Workshop still be good for the Goths? Well, they have the incredibly powerful Bombard Cannons. These are really good against enemies who are trying to do infrastructure against you. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. But basically, this means that the Bombard Cannons are going to take down enemy Siege Units and enemy Bombard Towers that will be a really effective counter against your other units. Also, remember that the Bombard Cannon is easier to move than a Trebuchet, which means that it kind of goes better with the Goths' faster pace of attack. They also have Onagers, and when you couple the Onagers with Hand Cannoneers, this makes a really great counter to enemy infantry. Now, you might think, why not counter it with your own infantry? Well, that costs a little bit, and if you're playing against a civilization that has infantry that's still pretty good, you might as well just use your best counter instead of a pretty good counter. Also, an Onager is a really good counter against enemy hand cannoneers, which will be pretty effective against your infantry. Even though I would probably give an identical Siege Workshop of a different civilization a lower grade, because of this Siege Workshop's application for the Goths, I cannot justify anything lower than average. You probably won't be basing your entire strategy off the Siege Workshop, but if you start to use it more, I think that you'll find out that it really is helpful for the Goths. Now, the Goth Dock isn't really anything special. It's not really that bad, because at least it has cannon galleons, and it has the heavy demo ship, which I think is always a plus. However, do notice that they are missing Dry Dock, and what this means is they li miss that last tech, which allows them to get plus 10 carry capacity. And I think that this actually hurts the Goths disproportionately because the Goths are kind of a swarm civilization. So if you can't carry as many units as you would like, that hinders that right there. However, the availability of the last lumber camp upgrade means that they will be able to hold their own in a normal sea battle. And as such, the Goths have an average dock. And now, for the best part of the Goths tech tree. Their defenses! Yeah, just kidding. Their defenses are completely awful. Like, they're so bad, they're the worst in the game. Uh, well, I'm not even going to talk about it, they're so bad. It is interesting to note, though, that in the HD expansions, they removed Treadmill Crane. This means that it's now harder to put down a barracks quickly, because you can't build them as fast. But yeah, for defenses, the Goths get, by far, the worst in the game. Yeah, that's enough of that. Now, I'm not really going to give the Monastery or the Goth Economy a rating. Just know that the Monastery is lacking in some major areas, and I wouldn't really go for it. And in all honesty, the real use for monks in a deathmatch game is against enemy battle elephants and war elephants, and the Goths already have a really good answer to that. And I'm not going to grade their economy because I don't really know what I would compare it to, and it's really hard to grade an economy because you have to look at its use for that civilization in general. But just know that the economy is built in such a way so that there's cheaper infantry, you can have a little bit more population, so it's a little bit easier to use your economy than it might be for another civilization for the goth strategy, but it doesn't 
make that big of a difference because you're already going to be using a good deal of resources to field those gothic huskarls. So now I'm going to transition over to how you should try to play the goths in a deathmatch game. So because of the goths barracks upgrade, that probably makes them the second best deathmatch rushing civilization in the game behind only the Huns. So you're going to want to start off by making some houses to get your population up and then making some barracks immediately. It's probably a good idea to send your scout to where you think your opponent's base is going to be because you want to get his vills as soon as possible. As soon as you get those barracks up, or as soon as you get the first one up even, you need to start sending Huskarls. They're created incredibly fast and they're pretty fast moving, but you need to quickly keep that pressure on your opponent. Also, make sure that you don't get housed because this is going to stop that steady stream of units. Once you've done some damage to your opponent, you're going to want to quickly, as soon as you can, build either some castles or some siege workshops near your opponent's base. The reason you want to do this is because you want to quickly destroy his defensive buildings, such as bombard towers and castles. If you completely take your opponent by surprise and do a great job at destroying his buildings, you're going to be winning pretty soon. However, this doesn't always happen. Sometimes he can defend against your rush, and so you're going to need to change your strategy. What you're going to do next really does depend on what type of civilization you're facing and on what your enemy's strategy is. I'm going to divide this up based on versus archers, versus infantry, versus cavalry, and versus siege and infrastructure. Countering archers is probably the easiest part as playing at the Goss, but there are some things that you should probably know. So first, the Huskarl is going to be your go-to unit because of its high pierce armor and it's just a really great counter against archers in general. However, if you are the Goths, they'll know you're the Goths, so they're going to try to counter you. They'll do this by using hand cannoneers or siege or something like that. So you'll need a plan to defend against that. Also, I wouldn't use bombard cannons as the Goths versus archers much, because archers are pretty good against bombard cannons because archers have a good range. Also, stay out of open areas because even though the Goths have a high pierce armor and they're just a really great civilization for countering archers, if you get in a tight spot, the other civilization can use the onagers or something like that to destroy large amounts of your army at a time. And most importantly, don't get overexcited about going against archers. Don't take it too fast. Make sure you still have a good enough economy to support your army. Now, when fighting against enemy infantry, you really have two options. The first option is just to try to overwhelm them with your own infantry. I think this will work pretty well if your opponent doesn't have any specific infantry bonuses, and if the infantry isn't really one of your opponent's strong points. However, if your opponent does have infantry bonuses, such as the Slavs, the Japanese, or the Aztecs, and there are some other civilizations, that if you try to go against them with your own infantry, you might win because of your numbers, but this requires you to have a really robust economy, and sometimes that's hard to get to. Now your second option is to use infantry as the backbone of your army, but to support them with either onagers or hand cannoneers, and maybe even at times skirmishers, depending on your opponent's unit composition. For example, if you're playing against a Japanese player, you're going to want to counter his elite samurai, which are going to be very good against your Huskarls, by the way, with champions and hand cannoneers. The reason you would not want to use onagers is because the Japanese have really good trebuchets, which are actually really excellent at taking out your own siege, especially because your siege isn't really that great as the Goths. However, if you're going to go against the Celts, you probably don't want to make too many hand cannoneers because even though they're going to be really effective against the Celt Woad Raiders, they're going to be absolutely destroyed by the Celt Siege Onagers. The first thing you'd want to do is take out his Siege Onagers with your own Hazars or something like that. Then you should probably make Onagers because Onagers take out both Celt Infantry 
and Celt Scorpions really well. And Scorpions, when masked, can be really devastating against your army. If you're going to be trying to go against Cavalry, you're obviously going to want to make some Halberdiers to counter that. However, the Cavalry civilization is probably going to make Onagers, if they have them, or Elite Skirmishers to counter your Halberdiers. If they make Skirmishers, that's really great because you have a really good counter to Skirmishers in the Huskar. If they make Onagers, that's also fine because you can also destroy them with your own Cavalry or Bombard Cannons. So you really do see that you do have a lot of options to take out your opponent's armies. Now what is probably the hardest civilization type for Goths to attack would be siege slash infrastructure civilizations. Now what I mean by this are civilizations that not only have good siege but also are good at defending areas that they have already captured. A good example, probably the perfect example of this would be the Koreans. To combat this type of situation, there are really two things that you need to be doing. The first thing is you need to be making constant raids against your opponent's economy. If you can cut off a gold supply, that's going to keep your opponent from making bombard towers, from making mass siege, and it's going to force them to make something else which is easier for you to counter. You also want to be forcing your opponent to waste those resources. So if they're going to be building lots of bombard towers, you want to quickly take those down with something like trebuchets or bombard cannons if you can afford those. And I think that the most important thing when facing a siege slash infrastructure civilization is to not lose units unwisely. I will admit I have been talking up the Goths for just about most of this overview, but this really is their big weakness right here, because you can't really combat a siege civilization with your own siege if your own siege is not stellar. But this is really what you're forced to do. So do not lose those bombard cannons or those trebuchets, because that's just a huge waste of resources for you. And, in the end, that's what's going to give your opponent a victory. Now I've already hinted about how you're supposed to go about countering the Goths, but I need to go in a little bit more in depth. So the first thing you need to counter from the Goths is their rush. So if a Goth player rushes you, you need to know how to deal with that. What I just do is I build my first buildings to be barracks that way I can actually create champions out of them and I build the barracks around my town center in such a way which allows my villagers to not be exposed. So you want to create champions because champions are a good counter to the Huskars. If you're managed to fend off the initial goth rush, what you need to do is you need to build up your defenses immediately. And what this does is this forces the Goths to use siege weapons and other type of units that aren't really the Goths' speciality. Once you do this, then you're going to hopefully have a good answer to the Goths' siege weapons. And you're going to basically cripple the Goths because they're not going to be able to use their infantry spam against you. This is basically what playing infrastructure means. You just kind of build up your uh, armies and you capture the areas that you defend by placing defensive castles, towers, and especially bombard towers if you have access to them. You also build military buildings in the area you've captured, so that way you can quickly create units to counter the Goths' impending attacks. Now, if your civilization can't really do a very effective infrastructure strategy, I can just tell you that champions are your friends, make a lot of them, Cover your weakness as well, so if you're going to make a unit, make sure you're going to make another unit that's going to counter the Goths. Counter that unit. And lastly, try to force the Goths into choke points, so that way it's harder for them to use as many of their units at a time against you. So, those are my thoughts about one of my favorite civs for deathmatch in the game. I don't think that they're the best civilization for deathmatch. However, I think that they're very fun to use because you get to use a certain type of strategy that really isn't applicable for any of the other civs. And this is what I think makes the Goths so fun. I hope that you have enjoyed this overview and the next time you get in a deathmatch game and you get the Goths, think to yourself, ah, I know how to use this civ. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.